What's going on, Colts Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Bring the Juice. Your guy, Cody, here. Joining me from the fan, Mr. Kevin Bowen. Kevin, man, training camp right around the corner here. I mean, it's crazy, man. Football is finally back. It's been a long, long offseason. How have you been holding up with with no football, man? Yeah, you know, I I try to enjoy as much as the quiet time and and the summer uh, with the family and get out on the golf course a little bit. Uh, but I do get this itch every year. Kind of post July Fourth is really when it hits for me. It's just like, all right, let's do it. And the football season is so exciting um, for me, collegiately, professionally, and um, I know how much joy Colts fans get. And certainly entering this year, there's a reason for tons of optimism. So I think that probably adds to it for me. So really looking forward to next week at Grand Park and finally getting some answers to all these questions. Absolutely, man. Then there's a ton of questions that need to be answered. You know, uh, I know there's a lot of positions that we're going to be watching. I know you did an article here recently on the fan about some positions you're watching. We're going to be doing a video on our kind of positions we're watching as well. Um, But I guess for me, Kevin, I'm curious, wanted to get your take on it. What are like the three big storylines you're looking forward to uh, getting answered here as when the Colts start camp here? You know, I believe it's August 27th or July 27th, I believe it is when the Colts first start their official first practice, what are the top three things, top top three storylines that you are looking forward to here? Yeah, you know, I would say on report day, um, which is a week from Tuesday, the 26th, uh, in some form or fashion, before you get anything settled on field, it's, all right, where's Kenny Moore's situation at contract-wise? I assume he will be out there, but you just need confirmation on that. Uh, Darius Leonard's health situation, does he open camp on PUP? Is he good to go? Uh, that's just kind of a weird, awkward end to mini camps. So I think those would be the first two I think of. And then third, and I'm not holding my breath that this will happen, but I do think it's a position group we've talked a whole lot about. And the Colts, you know, had a discussion back late in spring about wide receiver, but do you make an additional move there? I mean, you know, a lot of people are like, well, they haven't made a move now. Why would they make a move, you know, two days before camp? Well, why would you make a move on July 10th? You know, it's not like you can do any sort of on-field activity in you know late June and early July. So to me, there's no difference in signing a wideout on June 28th versus July 28th, as long as he can get out there for the start of camp, then you're good to go. Again, I'm not sitting here acting like they will go down that path, but I would say those are the three. If you're going to make me pick three, I'd say those are the three before uh, they start practice on uh, on Wednesday the 27th. Yeah, um, definitely. All three of those are worth monitoring. Yeah, that Darius Slender situation, very awkward, very weird. Like it just kind of came out of nowhere out of left field. And we all know how Colts fans are and, you know, lower body injuries. So if that had to add any more fuel to the uh, reveal, you know, fire, so to speak, uh, that was definitely one. But hopefully he's out there. And, you know, it's kind of been like the, the prognosis for when he's going to be back. It kind of seems like it's a little bit everywhere. Like some people are saying, oh, he's going to be ready for camp. Some people are saying, oh, he's going to miss most of camp. Um, where have you kind of landed, I guess? where What's the sense you've gotten from the team and everybody else you've talked to on where you think Darius Leonard will be and when you think he'll be available to practice? Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll be honest. I haven't had like a great grasp on the situation. Um, I don't think there's a lot of concrete information on it. Um, I thought it was a bit odd, just the wording that really both sides had used during different points of the offseason. I'm talking more in the, in the spring period. Uh, obviously, Leonard via... Pat McAfee, you know, try to kind of quiet a lot of that talk. But, um, you know, last year we saw him miss, you know, a good amount of time in training camp, and then look what happened. You know, he had a really, really strong year in the playmaking department. There are certainly moments where he didn't look like his normal self in the run game in particular, I feel like, or just kind of in his movement. Um, So, yeah, I wish I could give you a little bit more of a clear answer on it, um, but I don't have that, and I guess we'll find out next week uh, where, where he's at. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Kevin, as we do with training camp, there are some positions that we are going to be watching. Um, Let's start here with uh, one position that I think is particularly of note. Um, And that I think has to be, you mentioned already, the wide receiver position, right? Because there's a ton of guys. I think we, you know, and even beyond Michael Pittman, I think there's questions as well. Who's going to be the number two? You know, if you had to ask me right now, I'd probably say Alec Pierce, but who's to say? You know, there's a couple other guys as well. Um, so there's a lot of going to be a lot of competition and, and beyond that, even the guys from the back end of the roster spot that are going to be competing as well. Uh, what's your view on the wide receiver position going into camp? Yeah. Tons of uncertainty outside of Michael Pittman. Um, you know, I might have an article later in the week 
Cody on most indispensable Colts. It, it's an annual piece that I do. Um, I would put Pittman right up there with anybody in the team. You know, I, I, I just think, and, and first, I think he's a really good player, but I think the group around him is not very good and, or very unproven is probably the better way to, to put it. And I think there should be some questions just overall talent as well, but I would say unproven more so than anything. Um, you know, wide out wise, you go a number of different directions here. Uh, you mentioned Alec Pierce, you know, how, how ready is he? I, I liked what I saw in the spring. I thought he did a little bit of the normal stuff, normal wide out stuff really well, which I think that's kind of a question for him. You know, he, he has more of the flash, more of the big play stuff. It's more of, Hey, you know, can you run a, a proper route tree? Can you, you know, get out of your breaks fine? Can you create separation on some of the shorter intermediate stuff? And obviously when the full pads come on, we'll, we'll get a better idea of that as well. Uh, obviously Paris Campbell, we know full well where the question is, and that would be health. And then outside of that, like you said, you know, Michael, uh, Mike Strawn and Desmond Patman and Ashton Doolin and Kiki Guti and DeMichael Harris. You know, some of these guys, they've had moments. They haven't had any moments. They haven't earned the coaching staff's complete trust. There's just so much that I think, you know, outside of really Pittman is the one, Pierce is going to make the team. Anything could happen. You know, I mean, Ashton Doolin, I think, could emerge. Um, you know, Tiki Kuti, if, if he's healthy and all of a sudden shows something, maybe he is a surprise. You know, Patman has been probably like the most uh, available guy in, in, in practice, I feel like, over the past couple of years. But, you know, he's got, what, two catches to his name in the NFL? And, again, Mike Strawn fell out of the coaching staff's favor after that, you know, brief kind of cameo he made in week one and week two last year. So uh, tons of questions there. And I would also throw it to tight end. I, I think there's a lot of unproven, you know, nature with that group as well. Uh, there's some high draft pick talent. You know, Kylan. I mean, a fourth round pick at tight end is high for Kylan Granson, and then Jelani Woods, of course, as well. Um, but outside of Mo Ali Cox, you know, I don't think there's a tight end on the roster. It's caught more than you know what 15 balls in the NFL. I, I, I'd have to look up how many balls Kylan Granson caught last year. But um, those are some of the questions I have in general at the pass catching spots. Yeah, absolutely. Um, another position of note, a position that the Colts um, really tried to address strongly this offseason was the left tackle position. You know, obviously last year they'd made that trade for Matt Pryor, seemed to work out really well in their favor, but he is making the transition over to the left side, playing more left tackle. The Colts, Colts obviously did, you know, draft Bernard Ryman in that third round, and then they also signed Dennis Kelly, who has some tackle experience as well. Uh, what are your thoughts on this position? And uh, if you had to choose right now, I guess, who would you say is the, you know, quote unquote, starter to start camp? Yeah, I think it's definitely prior to start camp. Um, then a lot of it depends on kind of what you want as the Colts fan. You know, for 2022, would prior probably be the better option? Yeah, but, you know, if you're looking five to 10 years down the road, would you take a year of growing pains from Bernard Ryman if you could pencil him in as the guy deep into this decade? I mean, you probably would. Uh, yeah. Maybe Matt Ryan wouldn't, but you probably would. So I think that's a little bit of the, of the dilemma you see at left tackle. And then I think the trickle-down effect is then what happens at right guard. Um, you know, Ryman, I don't think did any guard at Central Michigan. I, I'd have to double-check that. I thought it was just kind of tight end to, to tackle. pryor has got some guard experience. So, you know, is it one of those things where you get the best five on the field and you put Ryman over there and prior to right guard? Yeah, you know, I've just – I've always been under the assumption that left tackles is different and you kind of figure out what that spot's going to be. And then you worry about the other four. Um, I think Will Fries is kind of a sleeper into the situation at right guard a little bit. Um, you know, could he be your top interior reserve if nothing else? And Danny Penter, who the staff has praised at every stop, um, probably the most praises come for him at center, even though, you know, where does he fit there with Ryan Kelly, of course, uh, but he's never played right guard. So it is something that, like, I felt like the O line last year was good, above average. But I didn't think they were elite, and now you're replacing two starters. Um, now, some might argue it's a good thing. Eric Fisher and Mark Glowinski were whatever, but you know, again, Matt Pryor, two career starts there, and Danny Pinter, none. Uh, does that matter? Um, are these guys going to step in and play really well from day one? Is Matt Pryor going to, or is Matt Ryan going to cover up a whole lot just with his experience and his ability to process and? quicker rhythm and all of that so um you know i would start with wide receiver tight end but then when you mention left tackle and just the o-line in general i, I do think there's there are some questions there 
What is your take on Jason Spriggs? Because I've heard some people like potentially say he could play the interior. I don't know how much experience he has at that position at the NFL. I know he played a little bit, I believe, at Indiana. So uh, what are your thoughts on him and maybe his role with this team if he makes the roster? Yeah, I, I would just say he's got to make the roster first. I mean, I know he started a game or two, I think it was, last year in Atlanta. I, I know that Atlanta offensive line didn't win many awards, certainly. Um, I can't recall any interior experience. Uh, but I think if you're available this late into the spring and summer, there's a reason for that. So I would still go with Dennis Kelly above him if I were making, you know, a kind of a backup tackle depth chart. Sure, for sure. Um, okay, let's move over now to the defense because there's a couple of positions that I think are of note. Um, specifically the cornerback. We kind of already know, I believe, we would all say number one, Stephon Gilmore, without a question. But number two, I think there's going to be a little bit of a competition at the outside corner between Isaiah Rogers and Brandon Faison, who the Colts brought in in free agency, who was with Gus Bradley last year in Vegas. I would assume right now that Isaiah Rogers probably holds down that spot to begin. But what are your thoughts on, on that position battle? Yeah, two guys that were tremendous in the spring, Cody. I, I thought both Faison and Rogers had some really strong moments, and, and they're a bit different. You know, Faison is a little bit of, of a taller, longer corner. Like you said, he's got the experience in Gus Bradley's system. If this team is going to press, you know, I, Isaiah Rodgers probably doesn't have the ideal frame for what you would want. But I've always said this about Rodgers. Cody, when that ball's thrown in the air, he just doesn't panic. And he kind of has wide receiver type instincts and knowing where that ball is, the ability to locate it and make a play on the ball, I think it's tremendous. Um, you know, Kenny Moore to me still plays every snap when he's out there. Uh, the question that I have is, does Stefan Gilmore play every snap? You know, if you look at his snap count last year, he, he did not sniff that. Um, now, obviously, he came off an injury and dealing with that, and we'll see, you know, a, another year removed. But you know, 32 years old for a corner is old. Uh, 32 years old for a corner that has battled some lower body injuries over the last couple of years is also old. So um, can Gilmore give you 100% of the snaps? It sounds a bit lofty to me. And if that's the case, then, you know, you just need Faison and Rodgers. I mean, I think a quartet of Faison, Rodgers, Kenny Moore, and Gilmore, not in that order, obviously, I think it's got potential to be a pretty good group, especially if we are wanting to do some things differently. Uh, but I think Gilmore and just exactly where he is, pitch count, health-wise, that will be something uh, to keep an eye on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, a position that, you know, we thought might have a little competition, but now really does have an open competition, staying in that defensive backfield, that strong safety position with Corey Willis hanging it up, going to decide to, you know, pursue full-time ministry, which I'm like, congrats, man, you know, go do that. But now that it opens a position for, you know, two guys in my mind, Rodney McLeod and Nick Cross, the Colts drafted this year in round number three. Uh, what are your thoughts on this position battle? Yeah, you know, when you look at it on paper, Cody, I think there's kind of like five. Uh, I guess kicker would make, make it a six-position battle, and two of them are the rookie versus the veteran. Matt Pryor versus Bernard Ryman is one of them, but Matt Pryor, you know, he, he's a veteran, but he's not really a veteran at left tackle. This one is truly experienced vet versus rookie. Now, you can make the argument Rodney McLeod's experience comes more at free safety than on paper. This looks to be a strong safety spot that's up for grabs. I'm pretty sure McLeod has started every game he's played in since 2013, which is damn impressive, extremely impressive for anybody in the NFL, let alone a non-quarterback. Uh, that, I think, adds to it as well. And then, of course, in cross, you've got tons of potential, but you got to do that. I don't even know if he can legally drink a beer right now. Um, so I think that's kind of where you're at of what do you want in the Gus Bradley system that I think asks the safeties to maybe do a little bit more, and what do you want next to Julian Blackman? as well uh, i think frame wise and again kind of down the road wise you'd throw cross in there and you see what would happen uh, but do you want to play it a little safer early in the year for a guy that is you know really uh, pretty inexperienced you, you know he started at maryland but still you know it's just not at the level that i think a lot of people uh would feel better about to start a rookie safety there so I think that'll be another one that it's just kind of what cup of tea do you want? Uh, do you want to buy on buy in on the traits? And you know, I think there are some staff members that feel like Nick Cross can handle you know everything that comes with starting. Um, can he handle it in September 2022, or is it something that needs to wait? 
uh, that'll be something to keep an eye on. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned the last position battle we'll talk about. It's not really a – I don't even know if it's a position battle because I don't even really know uh, the other kicker the Colts have the, on the roster. But Rodrigo Blankenship, Hot Rod comes in, another opportunity to win the kicking battle. Last year it feels like he had a little bit more competition with Eddie Pinheiro. Uh, but this year uh, Hot Rod comes in as the incumbent starter, I would assume, at this point. What are your thoughts on the kicker? Yeah, I mean, Hot Rod's got to feel pretty good that they didn't go out and make, you know, any sort of notable move, not even brought, bringing back Michael Batchley. Uh, you know, if you look at Jake Ver, I think I'm saying it right, Verity. Um, I don't know, I could be off on that. But uh, at East Carolina, it's not like he had some booming leg. So when you think of what Hot Rod doesn't do well, it's the length, it's the leg strength. But that guy doesn't seem to have, you know, a, a great leg. I don't have the numbers in front of me, Cody. I want to say it was like, Verity was 23 of 39 in college on kicks longer than 40 yards. Uh, so not, you know, some eye-popping sort of percentage there. Um, I did think he made a couple uh, long ones in the preseason last year as he was on Baltimore's practice squad. But, you know, this is a position battle that, you know, if Hot Rod sniffs anything that he did last year in camp when he was perfect with Eddie Pinheiro, he's going to regain that job. But you're, you're just always wondering late August who is out there. You know, do you see three or four teams that have really good kicking battles and boom, all of a sudden they, they cut a guy and that guy's, you know, who you end up claiming to be your kicker or, you know, even some trades that we see for, for a late round pick, something along those lines. But I think Hot Rod should feel, feel very fortunate that they didn't make a move there uh, because I, I just think it, it, it's interesting. The Colts have not been in a whole lot of positions, Cody, where I they like – the drive stalls out at the 33-yard line, and it's a fourth and nine. So, like, even for Frank Wright, going for it on fourth and nine would be, you know, risky uh, in, in Reich's eyes. But I feel like I see so many teams that happens to. Um, and then they trot out a kicker, and that kicker has a leg strength to make it from there or, you know, at least, you know, give you, um, you know, a shot that feels pretty good about it. Certainly Buffalo in that playoff game a couple years ago, you know, had a, had a kicker, had a rookie kicker. And Tyler Bass, I was able to make a couple long ones, hot rod missed a short one, and you can make the argument that was a difference in the game. So I do think it's something that a lot of people are like, oh, it's good. You know, Reich will just start going for it a bunch. Well, at some point, I feel like water will kind of find its level and the Colts will stall out and have some fourth and longs around that 30 to 40 yard line. And if you can have a kicker that, you know, is somewhat accurate from 53 to 58 or something like that, especially indoors at Lucas Oil, I think that could be such a weapon when you consider how many one-possession games. You know, you look at the Baltimore-Detroit game last year, Justin Tucker bangs one off the crossbar from, what, 60-something to win the game. And, you know, if they don't have Justin Tucker, they lose that game. Now, they obviously struggled when Lamar Jackson got hurt, but you know full well with how the AFC looks this year, how so much of it can come down to one game. So that is something that I thought they could have done a better job of just adding a little bit more competition. Having said that, I do think it's a position where uh, you can get fortunate late in August, early September, and maybe find another kicker. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's going to be fun to watch all these position battles play out. Well, last question for you, Kevin. What in your mind would make you need to be very confident in this team? Things you want to see in training camp that would make you very confident in this team moving forward into this 2022 season? Yeah, that that's a good question. Um, boy, I could probably go a lot of ways. You know, obviously, the Kenny Moore, Darius Leonard situation is getting resolved in their own different ways that, that need to be. Uh, Matt Pryor, I think locking down that left tackle job would be important as well. Uh, but I would say overall, if you can get Matt Ryan and the wideout tight end group on the same page, create trust and create some, you know, dynamic ability, which might be asking for a lot considering the lack of, you know, really proven production they've had. But I think that is a big unknown, a big missing ingredient, a big worry that I have entering this season. Is Jonathan Taylor, to me, seems pretty, uh, you know, bulletproof, if you will. I mean, he, he's just, you know what he what he's going to give you. And now making sure that you play off of that, which I think the offense at times last year hurt, uh, I think that's something that's pretty important. And I, I think, Cody, we can make the argument how effective, you know, I love golf. And so I make golf analogies a whole lot. 
you know, T.Y. Hilton, Zach Pascal, and Jack Doyle, in their own ways, they all, uh, well, definitely Hilton and Doyle, on the back nine of their respective NFL careers. Doyle ended up walking up the 18th hole last year. Um, but I don't think they were on the 18th hole. Like, I, I felt like they still had, you know, nice football left in them. They made up about half, a little bit less than half, of the of the catches you got from your wide out and tight end group. So whether you think they were mediocre or bad or good football players, they still were pieces for you that mattered. And now they're all gone. And you've replaced them with guys that are vastly younger and a couple of big rookies in Alec Pierce and Jelani Woods. So just how reliable can that group be? Um, yeah. I think that's probably the biggest question that I have overall. Yeah, well, I will say this. It certainly will will not hurt things to have the quarterback actually out there for the entirety of training camp. I mean, you remember that last year with Carson Wentz with that. I believe it was a foot injury, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he missed most, you know, a good chunk of training camp, and I think that maybe did hurt that offense. So, you know, at least the Colts will have that going for him this year. Oh, definitely. Uh, trust me. I remember very fondly uh, the oh. Wentz foot injury and then the Quentin Nelson foot injury as well. <laughs> Uh, Man, I heard heard rumors people were out there blessing the field at one point. (laughs) It was so ridiculous. It was like injury after injury. It was bad. But hopefully uh, we don't have that this year. Knock on wood on that. But, yeah. All right. Well, cool, Kevin. Thank you so much for coming on, man. Um, Always a pleasure having you on. And I'm sure we'll we'll meet up on training camp. I'm going to plan to be out there a couple days and, you know, try not to get sunburned. But I know I'll inevitably fail because I, I think that I'm more tan than I am. It happens every year, and I never learn. So, but nonetheless, it's going to be a lot of fun, man. I, I really look forward to training camp this year. It's finally good to get some football back. Yeah, really looking forward to everybody coming out to Grand Park. I, I, I think it's great the Colts continue to camp away from site or away from their own facility and the fact that it's free as well. It's pretty rare. I think they're one of six teams in the NFL to do that. So certainly hit me up when you're out there and uh, look forward to seeing everybody up in Westfield. Absolutely. Well, that'll do it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, guys, go Colts.